Tonight on the 31 Nights of Halloween Horror, James Robertson has a pretty good life. He has a wonderful, lovely wife, a wonderful, beautiful house, a great job, and also an evil satanic cult trying to get his wife to murder him. Tom Selleck stars in tonight's movie, Daughters of Satan. Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of The 31 Nights of Halloween Horror! Yes! It is the continuation of the Year of Infamy. And tonight, tonight we have a movie that uh, still kind of continues that sub-theme that we've been doing on of the whole cultish, ritual, uh, evil group, satanic crap thing, demon stuff that's been going on for a while. And this movie is no exception. It is Daughters of Satan. Oh my goodness, what a horrible cover. <laughs> I mean, it's all right. It's okay. Anyways, what is this movie about? Well, it's about Tom Selleck. It stars Tom Selleck. I mean, that's just like, you know, I... Do I have to explain who Tom Selleck is? Because uh, if I have to, I'm, I'm just going to... You know what? I'm out. Just kidding. Tom Selleck, awesome guy. Anyone from the 80s would be like, Tom Selleck, oh, bam, yeah. Anyway, so uh, he plays um, a guy who uh, goes around and purchases uh, art and stuff for museums, and he lives in the Philippines. And along with his lovely wife, and uh, the he goes to uh, this weird shop because uh, one of his sources says that they there's this tapestry there, and so he goes there. And while he's there, the uh, the Igor looking vampire haircut, like like literally the he's got the I don't know, and also the fake plat like glue on his mustache i anyways whatever he's like showing a satanic dagger to some lady and she's gonna buy it for luck because you know it's been consecrated by evil which you know i always think yes oh my gosh i need a lucky charm can i find something that was consecrated by pure evil because you know pure evil brings nothing but luck right right anyways so uh, while while she's doing they're doing that he's looking and he finds this painting of uh, an inquisition uh, which is being burnt at the stake and the middle one looks exactly like his wife. It's uncanny. He's like crazy. Anyways, lady buys buys a cursed dagger, whatever. And uh, he's like, oh, let me look at the tapestry. He's like, oh, yeah, this is fake, whatever. I wouldn't even pay for this. But this uh, painting I'll buy for myself. And he haggles it down to like about $75. And he takes it home and shows his wife. And his wife is completely mortified. And then all of a sudden, like, she knows something. She remember she told him what date it was and, you know, where it was and what the cult or the coven, whatever, uh, was called. And he's all like, how do you know that? And I was like, I must have read it somewhere. Whatever. Anyways, uh, whatever it is, that painting sort of triggered something. And then all of a sudden we find her being the, I don't know, uh, starting to be influenced by other people. Uh, a housekeeper shows up and, and uh, uh, saying, oh, we have an ad saying you're looking for a housekeeper. And, of course, the, the woman's like, the wife's like, uh, I don't remember this, but whatever, my husband must have done it. And, of course, she looks like another witch that was burning at the stake. There is this dog that shows up with this gigantic, horrible spike collar and is very aggressive, especially towards uh, Tom Selleck's character. And, uh, you know, uh, his name is Nicodemus, and his owner lives at 666-whatever street, right? So, I mean... Can we be a little bit, you know, on the nose there, I guess? Whatever. Uh, of course, there's a, the dog's on the painting, too. And, of course, he's, like, tries to track down the owner of the dog, goes to that place, and it's a morgue where this guy is basically, I don't know, he's taking a picture of uh, a dead topless girl for some reason, and he's, like, singing, and what, it's it's really weird. The movie is weird, okay? Anyways, so basically, the, the, the cult is uh, trying to... Um, to, I guess, awaken 
the, the witch within her so that they can kill her husband and complete the ritual. And weird things happen, and of course he's trying to like figure stuff out, and she's just trying not to lose her effing mind. And so, uh, yeah, let's get to those scores, shall we? Violence and gore. I am going to give this a 2 out of 5. It is not really all that that violent. I mean, there is some blood, there is some stabbing and, and things like that. Um, but most of the violence is the brutal whipping of topless women. <laughs> like, I mean, it's like the opening scene is the leader of the, the, the cult uh, whipping this poor girl because she's like, you gotta tell us the name of all our demon lords. You gotta, you gotta say them. And then she's just all like, I can't say them because you're whipping me and it's making me go on. <laughs> you know, it's so, um, yeah. So two out of five, I mean, like, uh, like uh, there's, there's some explosions. Uh, people die off camera, <laughs> but uh, yeah, two out of five. I'm uh, moving on to shock value. I'm going to give this a one out of five. And honestly, it's all because of, well, some little twists and turns here, but mostly because of the whipping, the whipping, the whipping of the girls. And it happens multiple times. Like, okay, maybe not three times. It happens twice in this movie. <laughs> Each time it's like, like, damn, damn, son. Anyways, one out of five. Moving on to plot, I am going to give this a two out of five. It is, um, it is a bit of a mess. Uh, if, like the whole point of this cult is to kill, um, the guy and they had ample opportunity to do it themselves. Like there's like a, there's a scene where he goes to investigate uh, outside because he sees there's fire and some women are in front by the fire and the, the women disappear and then all of a sudden there's just a whole bunch of guys with guns and they could just shoot him because we're apparently they're part of that cult thing but no we gotta do it with the ritual we gotta get the wife to do it because you know rules and stuff we cannot reach the height of the modification if we can't get the wife to kill the guy she so I can't just shoot him, I can't have the dog just eat his face off, and you know, we can't just, you know, poison him and then just kill him there. We have to create like this convoluted thing that makes it look like he's going to commit suicide or whatever, or it was a horrible accident. Even though one of the scenes, she literally had the, the Satan knife and she was just going to stab him. So I mean, I don't understand why. <laughs> They need to make it look like an accident when one of the times they try to kill him is they're just going to straight up stab the motherfucker. Another time was like the worst Pepto, uh, not Pepto, but the worst Alka-Seltzer <laughs> in the history of Alka-Seltzer. Like a couple drops into his glass and whoo, gigantic gas cloud of death. How is that going to be considered an accident? I don't know. How did he die? Gigantic gas cloud emanating from this glass. <laughs> It must have been an accident. No, but no, toward the end we gotta we gotta do the car thing off the cliff with icebox, which honestly, you know, kudos for, for the foresight about like putting the ice blocks, you know, and they'll eventually melt and the car will just but I I, I digress. It's two out of five. Two out of five <laughs> just nonsensical would be the word I use. So two out of five. Uh, moving on to nudity, I am giving this a three out of five. It, um, I mean, it's not pervasive throughout, but they're, they're, the, the scenes that are there, um, you know, besides some whipping, there, there's some nice, there's some nice, uh, nice memories. Here and there, and like there was also this weird conversation that this this widow was having with Tom Selleck's character, and she she's all like, you know, like you you want to have sex with me, and all guys want to have sex with me, and that's horrible, and you're a horrible person. He's like, I'm not even interested in you, and bitch. And he's like, No, you want to have sex with me, and he's like, Yeah, I gotta show you this thing. It's in my room. And he's like, Ah, and he's like, Look, I'm not gonna rape you. And then he's like, They have a conversation, and she's like, You know, just sitting there casually, you know, having this conversation, and all of a sudden she's topless. It's like. <laughs> And then Tom Selleck's character just doesn't even, like, acknowledge that or anything. He's just like, whatever, let's continue this conversation. Tits hanging out, whatever. Uh, anyways, um, 
Three out of five. Three out of five. <laughs> Moving on to enjoyment factor. Okay, so it's a ridiculous movie that isn't super bloody. <laughs> Doesn't have a whole lot of shock value to it. it has nice nudity. Why am I giving this a four out of five? Because it's just fun to watch. I thoroughly liked watching this movie. <laughs> Plus, Tom Selleck. Come on, Tom Selleck in a horror movie. It's just like Devil's Reign with... Uh, having William Shatner in it, in, well, I think also Ernest Borgnine's in that one. Anyways, it's just it's just interesting to see people <laughs> who you don't expect in certain genres to be in that genre, and not only just to be in that genre, as in like not just like a walk-on character, or, you know, a side character, but the main protagonist. You know, it, it's just it's fascinating to me, and the, the, the movie. It's fascinating because it's just, you're, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out, like, why, what, how, it's like, you know, like, what's the end game? What's the story behind all this? And honestly, I sort of figured it out uh, because I was, like, going, like, you know what? We don't see the face of the executioner, and I bet you, I bet you, um, you know, it'll be his face or something like that. You know, that could be considered a spoiler if it happens in the movie, but um, you guys, whatever, <laughs> out there. I don't know. I just like watching the movie. <laughs> I just liked it. I thought it was entertaining, even though it was dumb <laughs> and, 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 and ridiculous at uh, a lot of times. But still, I, I wanted to see how it, how it went, how it, how it was, went out and stuff like that. And uh, you know what? I completely uh, over, overshot acting now that I think about it. Acting is going to be a 2 out of 5. Look, Tom Selleck, 5 out of 5. Even if he sucked in this, it's still a 5 out of 5 because Tom Selleck's awesome. But yeah, everything else, I mean, literally, the movie is, is, is really poorly acted. It's not like the worst acting. It's not like one out of five range. It's not one and a half out of five range. You know, it's not um, nightmare weekend bad acting. But it's it's definitely below average. So, uh, moving on. so moving back to Enjoyment Factor, I really enjoyed it. Four out of five. My overall impression of the movie, though, is two and a half out of five. It, 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 it looks and feels kind of like, like one of those... Um, like, you know, there was like this whole satanic panic thing, uh, or no, I don't know if it was a satanic panic, because that's more of an 80s thing, but I think like in the 70s there was like a, a run of like, you know, like uh, blood on Satan's claw, and you know, daughters of Satan, and Satan this, and devil that, and, and so it feels like one of those movies that was made to cash in on it, plus it was in the Philippines, so it was made to cash in on the whole Filipino um, movie explosion that kind of happened in that period, and so, yeah, it's, so it feels really kind of, uh, like on its own, you know, pieces, uh, components very average though um tom Selleck, awesome as always and that mustache awesome mustache <laughs> anyways so two and a half out of five is my overall impression and that comes to an average score of 2.4 out of five so there you have it daughters of Saint <laughs> anyways uh I still enjoyed it. I still, I, I like that movie. It's, uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's like, you just, like I, I, I get super upset with um, Revenge of the Dead because of its nonsense. But yet this movie's nonsense just tickles me in all the right ways. I don't know. It's, it's, that's, that's the, that's the beauty of movies. That's the beauty of movies. Uh, you know, you never know when it's just going to be like, oh, man, that's, this is great. This is horrible, but it's great. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, so, there you have it. Thank you for watching another episode of 31 Nights of Halloween Horror. Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe. Tell me what you think in the comment section below. Have you seen it? Do you agree with me? Disagree with me? Do you agree that Tom Selleck is awesome? I mean, come on. He was a Magnum P.I., dude. It's Magnum fucking P.I. Anyways, <laughs> all right. <laughs> That's it for the 31 Nights of Halloween Horror. And uh, until we meet you next time, remember to stay scary, Internet. And remember, remember, um, if you start acting weird and you lose time and, and strange things happen, and it always happens when you're not wearing your, your, your crucifix or your cross around your neck, and, you know, you, you, you got your weird... Uh, Nanny, whatever, uh, not even nanny, like, whatever. The help tells you, oh, you should take that off at night because, you know, you could, 
Yeah, it could break like the chain or something. It was like, oh no, 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 I'm gonna keep it on because you know, you're creepy and things, weird things are happening to me when I'm not wearing this. So I'm just gonna, you know, think about good luck charm, you know, instead of like the fucking Satan dagger. Maybe, maybe just keep the, because it's, it seemed like it was the only thing that kept her from, you know, going into witch mode and stuff like that. So, I mean, I say, I, I guess my message is, if you're going to choose the good luck charm, choose the the holy good luck charm and not the cursed Satan good luck charm. Because, you know, what's the worst that can happen with the, the holy good luck charm? Nothing, really. I mean, <laughs> but what's the worst that can happen with the fucking stab death I mean, stabbing death, right? I mean, I guess you could strangle yourself, but like the chain looks like it's weak enough to... Anyways, I don't know what I'm talking about! Uh, I'm out of here!